ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the rosari biotech limited earnings conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during this conference please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anup Pujari from CDR India. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Pujari. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Rosari Biotech's Q1 SI25 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Edward Menezes, Promoter and Executive Chairman, Mr. Sunil Chari, Promoter and Managing Director. and mr ketan sablok group chief financial officer of the company we'll begin the call with opening remarks from the management following which we'll have the forum open for a question and answer session before we start i would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward looking in nature and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earnings presentation shared with you earlier i would now like to invite mr edward menezes to make his opening remarks Thank you, Mr. Anu, and uh, good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us on our earnings uh, conference call. It's a pleasure to have you with us as we discuss our operational and financial performance. We are pleased to report a strong start to the year, driven by healthy year-on-year -year growth in both revenues and profits. This performance is particularly commendable given the current environment, and it was largely driven. by the strong expansion of our hppc business and a healthy uptick in our tft division while challenges in our ahm division persisted due to industry headwinds we remain optimistic about the recovery in the remaining fiscal year our commitment to r&d continues to drive our success and we have seen many synergies emerge through our past acquisitions A notable example is the development of a single component in multiplier last year for the agrochemical industry, particularly in enhancing the stability and dispersion of herbicides. The multiplier simplifies the formulation process, improves long-term stability, and ensures uniform dispersion of the active ingredient, thereby providing better coverage and absorption by target plants. Such products develop such product developments are a key reason we have delivered strong success in the agro space. despite the industry witnessing subdued demand these innovations demonstrate our ongoing dedication to offering advanced environmentally friendly solutions that meet the evolving needs of our customers as we have mentioned in the past r&d is the cornerstone of our growth and innovation strategy strengthening rosari's position as a leading solutions provider in the specialty chemical sector our r&d capabilities enable us to meet evolving market trends and offer bespoke solutions driving growth creating value and enhancing our reputation for intelligent and sustainable solutions while commodity chemicals have benefited from global industry trends in recent years we see a promising shift where solution providers and formulators with strong r&d capabilities like rosari will lead the way in creating sustainable value for all stakeholders going forward the recent expansion at zahed along with increased etoxidation capacity expected to be completed by year end will help meet the growing demand in all key segments including agrochemicals specialty surfactants oil and gas and performance chemicals as india emerges as a major hub for global chemical manufacturing our r&d framework solid financial base enhanced manufacturing capacity and diverse product range position us well to capitalize on growth opportunities in both domestic and international markets with this i would like to conclude my address and now hand it over to mr chari for his comments thank you edward sir and a warm namaste to everyone the first quarter of financial year 25 has demonstrated our resilience and growth potential we have had the best quarterly performance ever both in terms of revenue and profits we are especially pleased the outstanding performance of our fpc segment which achieved a robust 21% growth our textile specialty chemicals division also performed well registering a 21% growth however 
the AHN performance, animal health and nutrition performance remained flat due to industry headwinds. Our ongoing efforts to expand our domestic and international customer base have been instrumental in achieving significant year-on-year -year increase in both revenues and profit, which grew by 19.3% and 19.5% respectively. We are experiencing notable success in our export markets, which are growing faster than our domestic markets. This growth stems from our strategy of targeting new customers in both new and existing regions. Our participation in key industry events worldwide has significantly contributed to this success. At Canspec Europe 2024, a key global event for the fine and specialty chemicals industry, we unveiled our latest innovations in specialty chemicals connected with industry leaders and showcased our commitment to cutting edge solutions. Similarly, our engagements at In Cosmetics Korea, In Cosmetics Global in Paris, and CPHI South Southeast Asia 2024 allowed us to present our advancements in beauty, personal care, and pharmaceuticals. The positive reception at these events has helped us build strategic partnerships and stay at the forefront of the industry trends. These strategic efforts underscore our dedication to pioneering innovative, sustainable, and customer-centric solutions across diverse sectors worldwide. Overall, we remain committed to our growth strategy across all business divisions, with a particular focus on agro-surfactants, the phenoxy series, the institutional cleaning, oil and gas, and performance chemicals. While our export markets have shown remarkable growth, our domestic market continues to be a key driver of our success. By developing new verticals within our core chemistries, we have laid a strong foundation for future expansion, both domestically and internationally. This balanced approach ensures that we can capitalize on growth opportunities globally while maintaining a robust presence and driving significant value in our home market. I would now like to invite Ketan sir to share his perspective. Thank you, Jarika, and good evening to everyone. Let me provide you with a brief overview of the financial performance for the quarter ended June 30th, 2024. As Charisa said, we've had one of our best quarters and a strong beginning to FY25 with revenue from operations growing by 19.3% to 489.7 crores compared to 410.6 crores in the same period last year. Our EBITDA has improved by 12.5% to 64.9 crores from 57.7 crores with an EBITDA margin of 13.3% compared to 14.1% in the previous year. The drop in EBITDA margin was primarily due to increase in other expenses, mainly driven by higher freight, travel, and travel maintenance, and selling and distribution costs. We've reported a record PAT of 34.9 crores, an increase of 19.5% from 29.2 crores. Coming to our segment by performance, our HCPC division saw robust growth of 21% YOY during the quarter, reaching rupees 365 crores compared to 301 crores. The textile specialty chemical division also grew by 21%, up to 98 crores from 81 crores. The HN division experienced muted performance with the revenues at 27 crores in Q1 FY25 compared to 29 crores last year. In terms of revenue contrib contribution, this quarter, HCBC leads with 75%, followed by textile specialities with 20%, and AHM with 5% of the revenues. Moving forward, our expansion projects at Dehej are progressing as planned and are expected to be completed by the end of the current year. The expansion includes adding 20,000 tons of uh, capacity for products related to HPPC in the specialty chemical space, as well as producing ingredients for our subsidiary companies. Additionally, to cater to the growing demand in the agro, home, and personal care, oil and gas, and pharma sector, we are adding ethoxylation capacities of 30,000 metric tons at the each facility of Urita. The commissioning will happen in the phased manner within the current year. These expansions will enable us to meet the growing demand across key sectors further driving growth. To conclude, we are confident about the opportunities in our business verticals and believe that our robust R&D framework, 
strong financial base and a diverse product portfolio will continue to drive our success going forward. We remain dedicated to our strategic growth initiatives, consistently driving innovation, improving operational efficiencies and better capacity utilization. We are confident that these initiatives coupled with our disciplined financial management and investment in our people will enable us to deliver sustainable growth in the coming years. Uh, that's all from my side. Uh, I would now request the moderator to open the forum for any questions that the participants may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to please use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening, sir, and thanks for the opportunity. Congratulations for a decent set of performance, you know, given the current macro. Uh, first question on the, the revenue growth. Uh, over the last three, four quarters, we have been reporting around, let's say, 15 to 20% odd year-on-year revenue growth. How has been the volume growth trend here, uh, if you can highlight that? Um, thank you, Ankur. I think uh, the primary primary driver for the last few quarters and this quarter has been the volumes for us, uh, both in HPPC and uh, this quarter we also saw good volume of take uh, in, in the textile uh, specialty chemicals. So, so I would say the entire growth mostly is coming out of volumes. Prices are uh, uh, more or less stable now. Uh, there are some places where we have taken slight price cuts just to get into the volume uh, Game, but overall prices uh, seem to be stable now. Sure. So, uh, would we say to say that large part of the growth over the last, let's say, two, three quarters is led by volume, which is, let's say, 50, 18 percent of volume growth yes. year on year? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, now, second question on the, the standalone and the, you know, the separate performance for standalone here. Uh, if I go back, you know, we used to do 15, 17 odd percent EBITDA margins, even higher than that, right, uh, pre-COVID. And after that, the numbers had come down. And we have been consistently in that 12, 13 percent odd EBITDA margin range for the last six to eight quarters. Uh, would we go back to those 15, 17, 18, 15, 17 percent EBITDA margin here? Or this is the new normal that one should look at? Uh, Unfortunately, now, uh, you know, the major businesses, uh, surfactants and uh, unit top, uh, you know, which is, uh, which was, of course, planned at Rosari as a calculation earlier. And I think uh, we should consider this as a new normal uh, in terms of EBITDA margins. Sure. So, so both on the subsidiary and on the standalone franchises. Yes, Uncle. Now, since... Uh, uh, both the uh, subsidiaries and uh, the standard and very lot of the population and the products uh, are going to go in a cross-selling mode. So it would be ideal to look at it uh, at the similar level. And uh, even going forward, as some of the capacity which we are putting up uh, in, in the Rosari facility of the hills will actually manufacture uh, ingredients which will go in as, uh, you know, inputs for the uh, products uh, which are manufactured at the top. So there will be a lot of cross-selling now between, the, as it is having a lot of cross-selling, this is only going to go up now uh, over the year. So uh, it will be ideal to look at uh, the EBITDA margin at a consolidated level and as Mr. Chari said, uh, this is, Around this is what at least for the current year, this is what we are seeing 13, second and a half percent in place between these two numbers. Okay, okay, great, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Namalgun from Nirmal Bang Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So uh, my first question is on uh, the HPPC revenue. So could you clarify what sort of uh, contribution uh, would have come basically from uh, uh, 
the Buzil Rosari segment here? Uh, 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 this is uh, the segment uh, is a similar uh, sales as uh, last year. Uh, in traditional chemicals business was about 60 crores. Okay. Uh, the reason why I'm asking this is, uh, I mean, uh, we did around 160 odd crores uh, last year, full year. And we are talking about, let's say, doubling the number. So just wanted to understand in this quarter also, I mean, the other expenses uh, look a little higher. So just wanted to understand that business is like a relatively low margin business and uh, any significant growth in that business would have contributed to this blended margin profile. That was the main question, actually. So you're saying 60 crores uh, for the quarter, right? Yes. So, uh, Abhishek, we've done 60 crores, around 60 crores for the quarter, and I think we are in line with what we had uh, talked about to the for uh, reaching the uh, annual number. Sure, sure. But uh, do you think because of this 300 crore number, the I mean, ex Bujal Rosaria margins uh, should improve uh, uh, on a consolidated level? Yeah, see, that way if you see a lot of X things, margins will improve, but it's, you have to see the business overall. So while uh, this is a tough business to be in, but this is a business you want to grow. So even if it's uh, uh, currently uh, a challenge on our margin uh, percentage, we are, we are okay to you know keep feeding this business for the next few years till it reaches its, uh, you know, a certain size. Sure, sure, perfect. And uh, last question from my side, uh, regarding that uh, GST uh, penalty notice uh, press release that you have put, uh, so should we expect a provision going forward for a, for a 25 crore number? No, 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 no. There, there won't be any right. provision. That's an order which has been passed uh, for uh, some, uh, as per the department, it's an IGST uh, refund which uh, they claim to be erroneous. We've taken yeah. proper legal views uh, on on the order which has come, and we are now going to appeal against this order uh, with the higher authority of Commissioner Appeals. And we are quite uh, hopeful of uh, getting a favorable order on this. No, this is a concern, so you're not going to provide for the same, right? Uh, Abhishek, by this notice has been given to practically thousands of exporters. You know who has you know uh, 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 taken uh, uh, refund on IGST paid on export trade. So it is an industry wide and uh, there is a big hue and cry, and everybody is sure that uh, this will not stand in the court of law. Sure, sir. Perfect. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Jain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for uh, taking my question. Uh, first, a clarification on textile revenue. Have we made any changes to the reporting? Because I think the base year revenue appears to be lower than what you have reported last year, same quarter. I think this presentation is showing it. Yeah, so uh, Sanjay, yes. So that change actually we have done in uh, August 2 of last year. We have done a reclassification of a product uh, from uh, textiles to HPDC. So if you see a Q2 presentation of last year, we had done this change and we had put in a note that we have got. You know, we grew what was the product? product? What was the product? I think it was... Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll need to check that exact product what it was. But it was uh, a, a HPDC product which was grouped into textiles in the first quarter and we had made that correction in Q2 of last year. Okay, this was only for that one quarter that, that yes. mistake happened. Yes, sir. so if you see our Q2 presentation, it's been corrected. Okay, okay, got it, got it. And just one one more clarification on textile. If I look at overall the years trend, we have been hovering around 100 crores of revenue. Uh, while you look at the peers like Atul, Rodolf and all, uh, they have reported quite a healthy uh, revenue growth in the textile segment. Any particular reason why we are not able to grow while the peers, some of the peers who are listed and report the number have been growing faster than what we are uh, growing? Any particular reason? Or we are more focused on HPPC and hence textile is taking a back seat? Oh, no, we are focused. Uh, we carry uh, We are focused on the textile business. Uh, uh, we have a bigger base. Uh, no, no, no.
this is no bigger than us uh, but but just in terms of growth rate uh, are we losing any market share there is no no like because our volumes have grown because our um, market has fallen exit has fallen uh, uh, and volumes uh, we see you know better volumes in uh, textile uh, compared to last year okay so why 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 then we are not able to transfer and i thought uh, edwards had also said that we are introducing a lot many products in the finishing side of it which i thought uh, were higher realization and hence uh, would have grown faster but if i look at the revenue uh, for last three years we are stuck at that 100 crores kind of a quarterly run rate no uh, last compared to last year the finished goods prices have fallen substantially so which has translated also into higher volume in the textile chemicals so for us we are steady uh, means we have grown now there will be other other companies uh, who would be on a smaller base and who have taken share from our competitors we have also taken some share from our competitors because the textile markets uh, you know as such have not grown uh, the home textile business is now on a upswing in india orders are good with our home textile exporters especially for the usa market uh, so uh, we are confident uh, of better sales in the coming quarters fair enough fair enough uh, second on the hpp segment if i just take out the part of it uh, it appears that quarter on quarter there is a decline of 18% uh, in a non unit top kind of a business uh, any particular reason why 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 we are still very healthy i i appreciate that but on a sequential basis it appears to be a much steeper fall uh, any particular reason there sanjeev what you think you take off what uh, that is uh, hppc uh, x of the um, consol minus stand alone no, no, you cannot see it like that uh, sanjeev as i already just sometime back talked about it There are a lot of products now which we are cross-selling. So okay. we don't subtract. I think we have talked about this earlier also. That it's not a right way to look at uh, the numbers now for Rosary. So for Rosary, because part of HPPC is done through uh, standalone, part of it is done through Unitop and Tristar. Some of the customers of uh, Unitop and Tristar, which we have developed. Uh, Uh, within uh, uh, the Rosary uh, distributor network are actually routed through sales uh, uh, are routed through uh, Rosary. So there are lots of uh, you know cost selling that going on, and that's only going to increase now with the new capacities coming up both at Unitop and Tristar. So my submission would be to not simply subtract numbers in the financials and look at it. It would be better. to look at it at a group level so this is to add to what kevin sir is saying uh, quarter 1 uh, financial year 24 we had big trades of 1 crore in hcpc um, in last quarter the quarter 4 of financial year 24 we did 344 crores and in the quarter 1 of uh, financial year 25 the last quarter we did 365 so we have consistently grown in hcpc segment so please look at it holistically sir No, no, I appreciate that, but the problem is that one of the product which is agrochemical is a seasonal product, and it has become fairly large. And I don't think it is an HPPC product; it's a completely an industrial product. It's a B two B product, uh, and hence I just wanted to see if I if I take it out, then how is our underlying actual HPPC product, uh, which is our earlier standalone product, looks like. uh but i appreciate that i know there is a lot of cross selling so i don't read it very thoroughly um because it was a sharper drop and i thought of asking it so sanjay also you must know that unicorn just not an agro today uh, i think we spoke some earlier also at the time of acquisition unicorn sales of agro products was 60 65% correct even higher today correct. the ratio between the agro and non agro is almost 50 50 maybe this quarter it could it would have been 45 and uh, this thing because of the season but the non agro business of limita has also grown significantly in the last uh, few years post the acquisition got it got it.
Exports continues to be, uh, you know, our main driver now. At least we've seen that in the last few quarters. This year, this quarter also, if you see of the overall revenues, I think close to 24%, 25% will be exports. So our wire wire growth is, you know, close to almost uh, doubling on the export side. And uh, this has happened uh, primarily in HPPC, but also now we are seeing uh, the export revenue of textiles also. Uh, you know, slowly forming up. Uh, some of the initiatives that uh, we took in the last quarter in Bangladesh and Vietnam, we are seeing some of that playing out now in this quarter. Uh, we also now this quarter started uh, initiatives in Egypt. So I think going forward in the next uh, um, balance part of the year, and majorly in the second half, we'll see some good uh, traction in, in textiles exports from these countries. Got it. What is what is our expectation on exports as a as a percentage of top line we can reach say next two years? See uh, uh, if you see overall uh, the business itself is growing. So it's growing both on the domestic as well as on the exports. But uh, uh, if you see till last year, I think last year Q1 would have, our exports would have been 20% <clears throat> of our revenue. Uh, today, it's, uh, uh, this quarter, it's almost 24, 25%. But if you see in value terms, it's almost double. So, or at least, uh, not double, but at least 50% uh, growth. Uh, so, while the percentage is growing, but the absolute number is growing, significantly. So I think we would be happy if the exports uh, absolute number keeps growing and if it's within this 25-30% kind of, of range, I think for the next two years, that's what is, what is our target number. Sanjish, does that answer your question? I think we lost him. You can go ahead. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may please press star and one. We have the next question, which is from the line of Varga from Ambit Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, team, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my first question, just continuing on the exports, uh, especially on the Bangladesh front, uh, how big can this uh, opportunity be on the textile side, sir? Bangladesh, Bangladesh uh, this uh, market it is bigger than in the Indian market, and uh, but it, uh, there were also a lot of forex issues which was uh, which is now considerably eased. Uh, so we see that the opportunity in Bangladesh is bigger than the Indian opportunity. Uh, we have a team of people present there. We have now a new distributor, and uh, we think uh, that uh, uh, progressively we should see. Better traction in sales to Bangladesh uh, than in previous quarters. Okay. Uh, so, second question relating to our institutional business. Uh, uh, so, at what level can we expect this business to become um, uh, break even? And uh, if you can share some insights into what could be your uh, sort of career plan to make this business uh, much larger from here on? The institutional cleaning limited this year we are expecting it to be 250 crores. The first quarter was about 60 crores. So we are lying, you know, and we have had a substantial growth in that product, in that business. Uh, the focus focus would be, you know, on all products uh, related to uh, uh, the institutional cleaning, hygiene, disinfection, um, and also food service. Um, so we are going at a basket by providing not only chemicals, but a uh, whole range of products together which can go into the institutional, uh, you know, uh, uh, cleaning and hygiene and disinfection line. Uh, so uh, airports, malls, uh, food service, <coughs> uh, hospitals, uh, these are areas where you want to focus uh, for this for this in the, in the uh, next financial years. Um, I think in terms of percentage of growth, because this is a smaller base, from 150 to 250 we are growing. Um, and we should see a healthy growth year on year on this, uh, this segment, primarily because the market is big and uh, the focus on cleaning and hygiene and disinfection is increasing. Um, uh, that is why we are very bullish on this business. Uh, this business is a very difficult business uh, because it requires a lot of service, 
a lot of people in the field and also a lot of equipment. For example, <coughs> if you go to a laundry in the, in the, in the um, hotel industry, we need to have dispensers uh, to dispense chemicals uh, to the batch washing equipment. And even if you go to a kitchen and there's a big automated dishwashing line, uh, we need to provide chemicals to dispense those chemicals in an automatic manner on big machines. Uh, other than that, even in facility management, for example, to uh, uh, airport, uh, we need also, because the manpower is unskilled, which are contract labor, which is coming to the facility management companies, uh, we need to provide dispensers so that dilution happens. We supply, uh, the, you know, uh, chemicals which are concentrated. So, for example, uh, you have to add between 5 ml to 20 ml per liter. Uh, so, this is, you know, a, a service concept rather than uh, rather than only only chemicals, there are other products which we uh, go at the basket uh, for this industry, and we are happy to not only focus only on chemicals, but to go as a uh, basket. Uh, we are planning to launch products based on um, you know kind of uh, powder and oil, uh, where the common big brand is better than, and uh, one of other products in the near future. Uh, uh, hospital hygiene also is something which we think uh, could grow in a big way in the future. So year on year, we should see much higher growth uh, than the consolidated growth uh, that is what we foresee in the future. And there any gross margin uh, guidance or working capital guidance to which we can give uh, once the business crosses maybe 400, 500 crores? I think uh, the business itself should be uh, higher gross margin uh, business for us. Uh, while there is a already uh, stretch on the working capital currently in the business, so we will we'll probably understand a little more of the working capital uh, uh, size once you reach that 500 crore number. I'm sure uh, it will be much uh, healthier than what it is uh, as on date. Uh, but currently, to give you a guidance on what the working capital will be, a little difficult for us. And in terms of people on ground, uh, uh, maybe uh, more than 200 plus people on the ground? Yeah, yeah, more than 200 people on the ground, yes, already. Oh. Great, sir. Thank you very much and all the very best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Muchal from HDFC Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, what's the capex that you're planning for this year? Cash capex? Uh, it's, uh, the cash outflow will be only for these uh, two large capexes which we have announced at Unitop and uh, uh, Rosari. Mm -hmm. so that's the, uh, only the major capex outflow that's going to happen. Apart from that, we have a uh, additional small capex of EHM, which is uh, you know, a vitamin premix uh, and uh, minerals uh, facility. So overall, we we'll have an outflow of Close to about 100 crores. Right. And sir, uh, secondly, uh, uh, on the sea freight issue, the container sea freight issue, what's the implication for us? Uh, it basically, the domestic market would probably benefit, uh, probably some impact on the, on the export market, but if you can provide some context to please, sir. Right now, uh, right now, all our contracts, we are going on FOB and we are ask, uh, calculating the freight available today and then telling them uh, that we have arrived at the C uh, CIF price based on this much amount of container freight. Now, at the time of actual dispatch, if the freight is lower, we will increase the CIF price. If it is higher, we will increase the CIF price, and we will be open and transparent that we do not want to earn from the freight. Uh, the freights are now nearly two, three times more than what it was, uh, but they seem to be stabilizing now. Gas uh, uh, one we did not see too much increase in what we had uh, the week, week before, but also we are also uh, seeing shortage of containers primarily because uh, our trade, uh, trade agents are saying uh, that the whole China is diverting uh, all containers to uh, shipping of electric vehicles. Uh, uh, there's also delays uh, because vehicles are not available, containers are not available, so uh, normal shipping times have increased. Now what is happening is uh, when container, containers reach late to our customers, uh, they, they get consumed late and then we have the next orders get delayed. And uh, if customers want to uh, try out some other suppliers, they can't say, 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 they can't
uh, overall, I think the whole of world is grappling with this, this problem. So it's a new normal uh, till it stabilizes. But our domestic market, which is about 75 percent, uh, that should ideally benefit because uh, for the uh, the competing products have become more expensive now. Uh, at least whatever was getting imported. If you see, uh, you know, our three segments for so HPC, textile, and animal penetration, uh, there is a lot of domestic customers because in all the three segments, uh, all the multinationals have local manufacturing facilities. Uh, so even in our imports, if you see imports, uh, we have very less imports compared to our exports. So if you see exports is, uh, you know, uh, on an average 120, 120 crores, uh, the imports should be uh, 20 to 25 crores in a quarter. So, so uh, I think uh, similar will be the case for our competition uh, because domestically now a lot of raw materials in the segment we are, you know, work in uh, are available. Uh, to give one, uh, one more example, for example, uh, acrylic acid uh, or butyl acrylic were primarily imported earlier. And now domestically, uh, BPCL practically imports the reports from over there. Uh, similarly, Acidic acid, ka dekhe nge, acidic acid. Uh, this this month we are buying only from GNSC uh, because the GNSC prices are much better than import prices. Uh, so India is coming of age uh, in terms of lot of raw materials availability and pricing also has become very competitive. All right, uh, sure, sir. Thank you so much, and all the best. Thanks. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chetan Thakur from. ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Chetan. Good evening, sir. So just two questions. One was, what is the contribution of Agrochem to this current quarter revenue and the same number last year? So just to get a sense of what has been the growth in Agrochem per se. And second was on working capital. How has that played out this quarter? Have we seen some release of funds from there? Uh, uh, Chitanji, with the agro, we do not have exact figures, but uh, because we don't have back revenue is based on uh, sub segments in the HCPC segments. Uh, but this season has been better than last season, and uh, we have seen sales better than last season. Uh, so the monsoon has been, uh, you know, very good, and uh, our all agrochemical uh, formulators. Uh, and the big agro, uh, agrochemical manufacturers, formulation manufacturers, uh, foresee a good, uh, good uptake uh, in the next two months. Uh, as, uh, as a percentage of value, we do not have exact figures to give to. Uh, uh, collections have also been better, uh, uh, but I think it is, it is nearly the same uh, uh, as uh, in the past. Uh, so it is not worth it, that is a good news. understand. And the working capital, uh, we've seen some release or uh, nothing materially in this quarter? So working capital is pretty much uh, same as what it was in March. Okay. We have seen some uh, steps now. Uh, so we hopefully by September we should see some uh, release of funds coming out of working capital. Understood. Understood. Okay, so thank you so much for this. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Cheda from Incred Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, first question is on the other expenses. We've seen a sharp increase sequentially. Uh, so would you highlight uh, if there is a one-off or uh, just in detail what these increases in other expenses are? Yes, this quarter, uh, uh, we have about... Uh, Three, four, four ish crores of uh, one off expenses that is on book. Uh, one of it is on uh, on the maintenance side. Uh, uh, in five star, we had a uh, planned shutdown for about uh, 12, 12 to 15 days. So that's where uh, the maintenance costs have gone up. Uh, apart from that, sir, sorry uh, to interrupt. I request you to please come closer to the mic, sir. When you speak. Yeah, is it better? Yes, yes, much better. Please go ahead. Yeah, so we had a uh, shutdown at uh, the TriStar facility. So we had some uh, expenses booked uh, on the maintenance side uh, during this quarter. And we've also initiated uh, in the last quarter some, uh, you know, uh, consulting work for restructuring on our HR front. Uh, now with so many multiple businesses and uh, a lot of new people joining in, so we had taken some 
professional health and you know restructuring reorganizing uh, bringing in new performance management system job description etc so some of those uh, uh, bills have got uh, expensed out uh, in this uh, quarter uh, apart from that i think uh, partly freight expenses have got up uh, there have been lot of spend in in the last 3-4 uh, months on lot of exhibitions uh, some of which uh, mr chari talked about in his opening comment and uh, the overall uh, travel expenses have also uh, gone up during this quarter so the i would say the selling and distribution related expenses have gone up uh, in this quarter so that pretty much uh, makes up uh, uh, for the the increased uh, other expenses that you see in the numbers i got it sir and my second question is on uh, the capex which is coming up in a phased manner so at current revenue run rate we are looking at a high single digit uh, implied revenue growth uh, but if you could talk more about how this capex will come uh, on board uh, if you can give some more details uh, whether it is from q3 or q4 etc uh, that will be it so most of the uh, expansion is based on uh, Uh, ethylene oxide as a raw material, and uh, as we had announced in earlier uh, calls, uh, we are expecting our expansion to be completed by March 2025. Uh, now uh, we should, uh, you know, we are waiting for uh, uh, the expansion of Reliance for ethylene oxide uh, to happen simultaneously. And uh, the first, because uh, uh, the customers will be big uh, giants. Uh, Companies uh, both in home personal care, in oil and gas, uh, in pharma. Uh, so we would uh, take some time for approvals. Uh, but I think, uh, as uh, we have said, the Kevin Sir has said in earlier calls also, um, uh, FY 26-27 um, uh, should be the right uh, year uh, for us to see 100% uh, utilization of these capacities. Got it, sir. That's it. Thank you. That's it from my. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, first question is on the institutional business. So, uh, we have a target of 250 odd crores, uh, and I believe that in terms of margins, uh, probably it's uh, lower margins than our company-wide margins. so what could be a critical revenue level uh, from where the operating leverage will start kicking in and probably it will, the margins would be at a company wide level thank you so rohit uh, i like to talk to you earlier also uh, i think uh, this business now at least for the next uh, we will need to show a strong growth uh, Uh, prospect. So we uh, we are uh, investing in terms of uh, people and other resources quite heavily in in this. Some of the new additions in terms of uh, you know people on the ground, if you see, are mostly happening in in this business. Uh, so currently, as we said, we've done 60. We are expecting to close this year uh, closer to 250 or kind of a number. Uh, I currently don't have the exact number when, but I have feeling that this number needs to at least double in the next two years, and maybe two years down the line we will start seeing uh, some uh, operating leverage uh, flowing in. So maybe closer to a 500, 600 crore kind of a top line is when this business will, uh, you know, really start uh, uh, showing some. Uh, You know, positive uh, traction, and then post that, I think uh, it will really uh, bump up our margins. Currently, also we, uh, it's not that this business is not giving us, but the level of margins are slightly lower than what uh, the company average is. Right, uh, got it, sir. So, second question uh, is in terms of the uh, textile chemical business uh, on the exports front, uh, Bangladesh and Vietnam. so uh, if you can just uh, let us know in terms of uh, what is the size of uh, employees that we have currently uh, in terms of maybe 3 years or 5 years down the line uh, what is the kind of uh, revenue that we are 
looking from uh, these markets uh, given the investments that we are currently making in terms of manpower and you know keeping uh, you know, local professionals out there so just a broader perspective would be good thank you uh, uh in bangladesh we have got six people working in the bangladesh uh, office uh, uh, in the sales uh, uh, we are because our sales are low uh, we are gradually uh, scaling scaling up uh, uh, you know this uh, thing uh, the textile exports as a whole we are expecting it to grow uh, primarily because the shopping has happened uh, uh, in the american market and we our customers are having uh, in india and as well as bangladesh and other countries are having you know good orders uh, uh, for the current currency here sure uh so just one last clarification we have uh, incorporated a subsidiary in dubai so what the uh, strategy behind it uh, we have uh, uh, incorporated a subsidiary in dubai uh, uh, primarily you know for any global uh, expansion that we in a plan going forward so uh, rather than holding it through india we uh, currently incorporate this subsidiary uh, any new uh, you know setup which we may plan to do in any other country we would like to do it through through this dubai subsidiary so that's the plan as of uh, now we are looking at uh, Uh, some of job, some of the geography is still in the planning stage uh, where we would like to set up some small facility uh, so so we will do that under this this company in dubai uh, so will it be a manufacturing setup or will it be purely a marketing or selling uh, um... so it will be a mix of both we may start off with a marketing uh, facility and then Uh, maybe as the uh, business grows and as we see some traction in the in the customer base, we may even set up uh, uh, you know a, a manufacturing uh, facility. Sure. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, that's all, and the best of luck, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pradeep Rawat from Yogya Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity. so i have couple of questions so first of all on working capital so over the years our working capital base has been constantly increasing uh, so why is this happening and what should be what what should we expect in future on this front uh, uh, uh if you see our business before our acquisitions and now uh, now the acquisitions is mostly based on the perfection business the perfection business uh, like intop and trashta uh, uh, is also where we have to buy eo and also the hydro food which reacts with eo uh, like lauryl alcohol or normal phenol or tridifer alcohol or or any fatty acid uh, these are all purchased in advance from and we have you know uh, the normal standard bank is turn to our uh, customers uh, so we cannot compare apple to apple what reserve was four years ago Uh, before the acquisition happened, and what it is now, uh, and as we uh, said in the last uh, two earnings call, uh, this uh, uh, between 90 to 100 days is the new normal which we should consider. Okay, and with regard to demand dynamics, so how are we seeing the demand dynamics unfolding for textile and HPPC segment, and what growth should we consider for FY25? So <clears throat> both the markets we see healthy demand uh, both uh, uh, domestic and in exports. Uh, as I said earlier, the textile uh, home textile market, especially from the US, uh, the orders are full with our current customers in India and also in in Bangladesh. Uh, so we 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 should see uh, higher sales in both uh, these countries but other countries also. Uh, in the HPPC segment again. Uh, we see uh, exports and domestic market uh, both having good demand. Uh, so we see uh, both the segments uh, uh, should uh, continue to do better than uh, what it was uh, last year on quarter to quarter basis. Yeah, uh, and now uh, and one quick question about utilization. So, what is our current utilization? 
So, uh, as you can see, the calculation side of our utilizations are at 90 percent plus. Uh, at uh, both the uh, sites of TriStar and Unitop. Our peak utilization is somewhere around 65-70% and we are operating at 90% of that 60-75%, right? No, no. See, we have uh, capacities of ethoxylation and we have uh, the other capacities uh, uh, of reaction, etc. So, on the ethoxylation, which is our core uh, um, activity, we, our plants are working at almost 90% and overall if we take an average, we are at about 55 to 60%. Okay. And the other one is that we are doing KPEXs, two KPEXs that we are doing, so what would be the revenue opportunity from, from those KPEX? At a peak, uh, these will uh, give an asset turn of about around 4. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Bhavan Soni from Anandrati Share and Stock Brokers Limited. Please go ahead. Oh, hello, good evening, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, Bhavan. Sir, so, so I just wanted some clarity on the freight expenses. You mentioned that uh, their expenses are one off with respect to uh, the exhibitions and travels and sales and distribution, but can you just uh, give a breakup of how the rate increase on a Q on Q and Y O Y basis? I, uh, I mean, often I don't have uh, those numbers, but rate is an uh, increase is almost. I would say about uh, if you see Y O Y, it would have definitely increased about thirty five to forty percent of what it was in Q one of last year. Okay, okay. And uh, how do you see it going forward? Like for now, you have said that it's stable since last week, but for this quarter and next quarter? Mm, in terms of freight, uh, we see at the same level that we said uh, now, uh, based on uh, June and uh, the uh, first uh, half of July, uh, we don't increase uh, destination wise too much increase in freight. Uh, the, uh, the container and the shipping freight uh, availability and uh, ship availability also is little better, not not the same as uh, uh, like in January to March quarter, but I think uh, uh, this is little better than, than previously. Okay, and sir, any one of our uh, spikes in employee expense because they also increased uh, around 17% YOY and 14% Q on Q. So, so that's not a one-off uh, increase. There we have uh, brought in people through the year, between last year and current year, and of course there has been a general increment in Okay, okay. Thank you. That's it from my end. Thank you. We have no further questions, ladies and gentlemen. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, everyone. I hope we have been able to answer all your questions satisfactorily. Should you need any further clarifications or would like to know more about the company, please feel free to contact our team or CDR India. Thank you once again for taking the time to join us on this call. Have a good evening. Thank you. On behalf of Rosari Biotech Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.